Yesterday, we read a poem about the rain. Today, we're going to read a story out of our big book about weather. This is the front cover, back cover, and the title. The title of this book is What's the Weather? And this is the spine. Now remember, this big book is special because it doesn't just have one story, it has a whole bunch of different stories. And when I open it up, I see the title page. That's just to remind you of the title in case you forgot. And when I turn the page again, I see a special place called the table of contents. The table of contents tells you where to find things. Our story today is called When Rain Falls. And when I move my finger across the page, I see that it's on page 22. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn to page 22 and there it is. When Rain Falls. And this is the title, the author, and the illustrator. Remember, the author writes the words and the illustrator draws the pictures in the story and the pictures that they draw are connected to the words on the page. Before we start, let's talk a little bit about the different types of print that authors use to organize their writing. Print is just what the font looks like. A slanted print is called italics. This is an example of italics. Do you see any other words that are in italics on this page? I see some right here. The author uses italics to alert the reader to pay attention. Our selection today is an informational text. An informational text is made up of some different parts. Informational texts are about real people, animals, places, or events. They contain facts, and these facts can be checked in another source. They might use diagrams, photographs, or other illustrations. And they present information in a clear way. Before we start, we're going to do a picture walk. While we're doing our picture walk, I want you to look at the pictures and make some observations. What do you see? What's happening on each page? And that's the end of our story. Now that we have previewed our book, let's get ready to read. The essential question I want you to think about as we read this story is, what do animals do during a rainstorm? Our comprehension strategy for today is predicting and confirming predictions. When we predict and check our predictions, it allows us to summarize what we read so far and to identify clues and events in the text, and also to use prior knowledge and personal experience to make inferences or guesses about what will happen next. So we take all that information, put it together, and it helps us make a guess. And as we read, we can check to see if our predictions are correct. Summarizing allows good readers to check their understanding as they read. When we summarize, it helps us keep track of what we're reading and focus our minds on important information and key details. If there are gaps in our understanding, we can always go back and reread a part. Let's read our story. And remember, when we read, we go from left to right, across, and top to bottom. This is the first word and the last word on this page. Essential question. What do animals do during a rainstorm? When Rain Falls by Melissa Stewart, illustrated by Constance R. Burgum. Inside clouds, water droplets budge and bump, crash and clump. The drops grow larger and larger, heavier and heavier until they fall to the earth. When rain falls in your neighborhood, you run inside and wait for the storm to end. I'm going to predict what the author is going to talk about next. 
I predict the author will tell how the weather affects the children. Maybe the story will tell what the children will do as they wait for the storm to end. They might play a game or read a book. <laughs> That's what I would do while I wait for the rain to stop. Let's read on and see if my prediction is correct. When rain falls in a forest, scurrying squirrels suddenly stop. They pull their long bushy tails over their heads like umbrellas. A hawk puffs out its feathers to keep water out and warmth in. Chickadees stay warm and dry inside their tree hole homes. I will check my predictions from time to time as I read. The author is now talking about what some animals do in a rainstorm, and there's no mention of the children. The author did not tell what the children are doing, but I'm going to keep reading to see if my prediction is right later. A doe and fawn take cover under a leafy tree canopy. A red fox nestles in a warm, cozy den. This looks like a good place to summarize because it looks like we are starting a new place where rain falls on the next page. The author talks about the animals in the forest on pages 24 to 26 and then changes to a field on page 27. When it rains in a forest, a squirrel uses its tail as an umbrella, a hawk puffs out its feathers, chickadees hide in a tree, the deer hide under a tree, and a red fox family stays in a den. When rain falls on a field, plump little caterpillars crawl under leaves and cling to stems. Adult butterflies dangle from brightly colored flower heads. A raindrop knocks a ladybug off a slippery stem. The insect bounces into the air and then tumbles to the ground. A spider watches and waits as the rain beats down on its carefully built web. A mouse crouches under a fallen leaf. Bees hide in hives and ants stay safe in their underground nests. The author begins giving information on a wetland on page 31. So this is a good time to summarize the information about the animals in the fields on page 27 to 30. When it rains on a field, caterpillars and butterflies hang on plants, a ladybug falls to the ground, a spider waits, a mouse stays under a leaf, Bees stay in a hive, and ants stay in their nests. When rain falls in a wetland, turtles tuck in their tiny heads. Rain splatters against their hard, strong shells. A dragonfly swoops down to perch below a fluffy cattail seed head. Whirligig beetles swim in circles and struggle to stay afloat. Sparrows huddle deep inside a dense cluster of leafy bushes, but ducks continue to cruise through the water. Raindrops slide right off their oily feathers. I'm going to summarize what happens to animals in the wetlands when it rains. Turtles tuck their head into their shells. A dragonfly sits on a cattail. Beetles try to float. Sparrows stay hidden in trees and ducks swim in the water. When rain falls in a desert, a rattlesnake squeezes into a rocky crevice. It curls up tight and falls asleep. A tarantula scuttles into an underground tunnel. Bats hang silently in a hillside cave. An elf owl takes cover in a cactus nest. Spadefoot toads dig to the surface. They lay eggs and then burrow back into the sand. When the rain stops, animals living in fields and forests, wetlands and deserts, return to their daily routines. And so do you. Let's check our prediction now that I'm at the end of the text. Well, the author never did mention what the children did while it was raining, so my prediction did not happen, but I thought it was more interesting to find out what the animals were doing. That sure was an informative story. I learned a lot about what different animals do when it rains. We did our picture walk, we made some observations, and we read the words on the page. Now, let's go back and check to see how we know that our story was an informational text. So remember, informational text is about 
real people, animals, places, or events. And the information in this text is about real animals in real places. Informational text also contains facts, and these facts can be checked in other sources. Well, when I look at the names of these different animals, I can look and see if that fact is correct by reading a book about those animals or if I've seen them in real life. So the names of the animals and the places they live, those are facts. Informational text also uses diagrams, photographs, or other illustrations. In our text today, they used illustrations. It also presents information in a clear way. Notice how the author organized the animals by where they live. And for each new place, it begins with the words, when rain falls. And we see that for each place, when rain falls, now remember, stories can help us learn and understand new words. Let's see how our story can help us deepen our understanding. I'm going to turn to page 22. The word clump means to gather together in a group. Let's look at our book and see what helps us understand that. Inside clouds, water droplets budge and bump, crash and clump. Now, as I read that, I pictured the drops, they were, they were budging, so moving around, bumping each other, and crashing and clumping together. So I'm imagining drops of water getting together, and then when they get heavy, falling as rain. Now let's turn to page 27. The word dangle means to hang or swing loosely. Let's see what helps us understand that. Adult butterflies dangle from brightly colored flower heads. Oh, and when I look at the picture and read those words, that helps me understand that dangle means that they're hanging or swinging loosely from the stems. I can see it in the picture and also from the words. Let's now turn to page 31. The word struggle means to make a great effort. Sometimes I struggle to get up in the morning, but I really want to see all my friends, so I make a great effort to come every single day so I can see you. Let's see what in our story helps us understand that. Whirly gig beetles swim in circles and struggle to stay afloat. Oh, I see. So I'm imagining these beetles swimming and the water droplets are falling and hitting them. And so they're struggling. They're making a great effort. They're doing their best. They're trying their hardest to stay afloat and not sink. Hmm. And I actually want to talk a little bit about that word struggle. Sometimes in kindergarten, we're going to do things that we struggle with. Struggle isn't a bad thing. It's actually how we learn and grow. So my friends, if you struggle with letters or reading or writing or even just understanding the text, it's okay to struggle, friends. The most important thing is that you do your best and you keep trying. You push past that struggle and you keep going. So even if I struggle with it, I just keep going and I keep trying and I keep doing. Great job, friends. I had a lot of fun reading When the Rain Falls with you today. I can't wait to talk more about it in our pods. I'll see you later.